Welcome to Web Ambulatory General Training. This is video one and we are looking at general navigation. To get into Meditech Train, you will launch that from your shoreline. We're going to scroll down to our quick links. From there, you will have access to your Meditech training environment. Please do not do any training in Meditech Live. We do not want to be changing live patient information. Clicking on Meditech training environment from your quick links will take you to your Meditech Expanse. I do have a session open, so either you can click on launch new session or you can follow me and click on your last session. From here, the primary thing to remember, and this is only relevant for train, you will have to change your subdivision in order to be able to access the correct charts. So clicking on subdivision here, make sure that you change your facility to Ontario Shores Ambulatory. If you do not do this, you will not be able to access the chart. So you may see Ontario Shores at this point, do the drop down and make sure you select Ontario Shores Ambulatory. Click OK and you're back to your main menu. Next, you will click on Web Ambulatory to get into the new Web Ambulatory module. Previously used PCS status board. For some users who are still documenting on the OCAN for your patients, you will be using PCS status board to continue that documentation until our next upgrade, which will link the OCAN into Web Ambulatory. For everyone else, let's click on Web Ambulatory to access your chart. You will be brought to the clinical home screen. So if you click on your return to e box, you'll see clinical home screen and this is your Ontario Shores ambulatory module. Okay, you can toggle between the different windows by clicking on the window that you want to go to and you can close the window by using the X. The next button along the side here is your workload. Clicking into workload will take you into your patient messages. So as you can see in this example here, I have health portal messages. These are messages that are sent to me from my patients who have access to their patient portal. You can click into each of these to be able to read the messages. Clicking on home will take you back to your home clinical home screen. You also have your sign queue along the top here. So any documentation that has been saved and not signed will appear here. For this user, you can see that there are 15 documents that have been in a draft status that has not been signed for this user. You can see the list of documents along the side here. This user has a lot of documentation that requires signature. You'll notice along the side here, if there's a green check mark, that means I have answered all the required questions for this documentation and I can submit and sign it. For documentation that has required documentation, as in I have to answer some questions in order to complete this documentation, I'll see an exclamation mark and you'll see that it's in draft. In order to complete this documentation, I would click into edit to add my documentation and then I can submit. The best practice for this is to ensure that you sign all of your documentation at the end of your day and at the end of your appointment. The only documentation that should be left in draft are your initial assessments that may take over several sessions to complete. Otherwise, the expectation is that you're completing all of your documentation by the end of the day. And you can return to them using your sign queue button. Alternatively, you can compose a message and I will demonstrate this once we enter a patient's chart. I'm gonna click back on my home screen to return. Um, Next, we have your name and your designation across the top. You can also click on the refresh button to refresh your list below. You also have your find patient functionality. You can search by looking up by MRN number. 
or you can find a patient by name. Searching for these patients, you'll be looking at the MRN level. You also have this schedule here. Clicking on this icon here will take you to your coverage list. So say for example, you're covering a colleague who is on vacation, you can click into the icon and you have coverage off, meaning you can remove anybody you're covering or you can edit coverage. Clicking on edit coverage allows you to search for providers and add them to your list. For example, here you can see Dave Long, I am covering and it's not green. If I wanted to cover him, I can click on it and it turns green. If I wanted to stop covering Nadine, I can click on Nadine and you, she will be low lit. By doing this, I will also see their schedule for the day. And along the calendar, I can click on different dates to see the calendar for each of these respective dates. If Dave Long had additional uh, patients scheduled to his calendar, I will also be able to see his calendar as well as my calendar. You can click on today to return to today's date. And you can click on more to go to scheduling grid. The only thing that you will be doing through the scheduling grid is looking for maybe your clinic. For example, if I clicked on at Durham, I'll be able to see all the staff for at Durham as well as any patients that are at, scheduled for that day to that clinic and which staff they're with. Otherwise, for the most part, the secretaries will be supporting you in scheduling. I'm going to close out of here and return to my home. Additionally, if you would like to see your ske the schedule below change and reflect that of a different user, you can do the drop down and search for a specific user or a location to see what schedule what their schedule looks like. This is a secondary filter, so you can sort the patients by a specific name, time, or status. You'll notice here that this is the patient that is scheduled to me, and this is the time that they're supposed to be here for. You can see the clinic that they are scheduled against, their age, gender, as well as who they are scheduled to. So if you're covering for a different user, you will see their name across here. So if Dave had a patient here and I'm looking at his schedule, I would see Dave's name here, appear here. You'll also see the appointment status. So if the patient is arrived, you'll see that as well. So once the secretary arrive, uh, changes the status of the patient to arrived, you'll see that this change as well. Along the side here, you also have recently accessed. This will display patients that you have accessed in the last seven days. Okay. And you'll also see a visit date. If there's no visit date, for example, on this patient, once you click into the chart, you will have to choose a specific account. You also have quick links at the bottom. And this is your home screen. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to professional practice or send out a ticket to IT service desk. Thank you.